so thanks for joining me this afternoon as you can see i'm actually using the um floral ultimate 3d sets today this is the first time i've actually used these since um they came out and since they were launched so it's really nice to get them out and have a play and i've had a request to make a couple of birthday cards so this is what i've come up with so far um, I need to make another one along the similar sort of line. So I thought I might as well come on here and share the process with you. Just so you can see how the stenciling comes about. Um, it's a really nice relaxing way to sit and craft. Even if, even if you're not going to be making a card, to be honest, it's really nice just to sit down and play and just see how these uh, stencils work and how they come about and how they look when you die cut them and then emboss them and whatever so it's really nice there's a little technique that i want to show you um also just in the background here you can see on the matten layer um i've actually 3d this so the numbers are actually up on foam blocks and this frame is also up on um foam as well so that is three three deed but you can see in the background that we've actually got some embossing here I've actually used a 5x7 embossing folder, a 5x7 rectangle embossing folder, but I've used it on a square card. And I just wanted to show you how you can get that effect without ruining the card and having sort of any extra um, emboss lines here that we don't want. So in a, essentially, we can make um, the 5x7 embossing folder. Let me just show you quickly while I'm chatting about it. This is the 5x7 embossing folder, which if you actually see, is a lot narrower than the square card that I've actually used it on. But looking at the card, you would never know that this wasn't a square 6x6 embossing folder. Um, normally, if you would run this through, you would get yourself an embossed line on the side which then would mean that you wouldn't necessarily want to use that on a square card so i just wanted to show you just a little little tip on how you can sort of i suppose give yourself more options when you're using the five by seven um, embossing folders um, if you see also on these numbers i've try to achieve a little bit of um, a gradient effect a little bit of an ombre effect just to give the numbers a little bit of dimension also so i shall show you how i go about um, trying to achieve that also so if we can get in stenciling straight away then so the reason the other reason why i've done the number seven first is because that was on another set of stencils um, also so it's actually a lot easier to do these individually whereas when i've done the 65 these are actually both on the same stencil and die set okay each of these stencil packs contains nine stencils and these particular stencils um for these particular numbers one to uh, sorry zero to three are square the rest of the stencils do come as a dl pack but they all work all in the same way so as with all of Lisa's stencils, they are all numbered. So just check that you have all the stencils in the right order and the right way round, and you can see the numbers in the corner there. Okay, so let's get going. So obviously our first stencil has the numbers in the background. So I position our cardstock, and I'm using Lisa's um, Super Smooth cardstock background number i'm doing in purple and the majority actually of the stenciling i will be doing is with the smaller stencil brushes but just to start off on the larger number i will use one of lisa's uh, wonder brushes so the colors i'm using today can you see them all there yes you can um so the majority of the stenciling will be spice plum sugar candy i'm going to add a little bit of the tranquil waters which is lovely blue alongside the and layering it with the woodland moss just to create a slightly different green color so they're the colors i'm using today so i'm going to take a little bit of ink we don't want too much we need a little bit more and i always blend straight onto the stencil uh, material first and then come up into the aperture of the stencil 
and I'm just initially creating just a really pale background. I'm just working that round and round so I get a really nice smooth blend. Now I think I've, I've said it before, but the more that you work this around and just go gentle, you really don't need to press hard at all. Just carry on going round and round, you will get such an even blend of colour. Now with this particular number actually, you'll see there's a quite a large cent uh, piece in the centre which is only attached here. Now if you were to move this and be too vigorous with your stencil brush, this would perhaps move just a little bit, not too much. So it might be just worth just just securing that in the centre, just with um, just with your finger there, just to make sure that that doesn't wiggle around too much and you'll know then that you will get an absolutely crisp stenciled impression underneath. Now we want to try and create some of this ombre look here. You can see the sort of shading. So it depends on how you want to do this, but I the way I've worked it, it was where the numbers are, from the ends of the numbers in to where the, I suppose, the fattest part of the number would be. I'd go from dark through to light. So this here is where I want the lighter part of the number to be. So I'm going to put some darker shading just around these sections here and just work my way in towards this sort of larger section here. Now, I think I've gone past the point where this larger brush is useful to me. So I'm going to come in with the smaller stencil brush. And this is where I can start actually controlling the detail that I'm adding. And just in circular motions, just keep on adding until I've built up that colour to be as strong as I would want it to be, actually. So this is what makes this entirely personal to you. And you can see how now the blend is starting to happen. It's a lot darker on this edge and we've got like the um, highlight section in the middle. So we just blend in that section there just so that becomes a little bit more seamless and you don't need any more ink for it. You just need to keep working your stencil brush round and round and round and that will soften the blend that you've created. So I think I'll possibly leave it at that. So when we take that away, We've got a lovely blend sitting there. So we come in with stencil number two and straight away we can see that this is some foliage. So come in with a green stencil brush and just direct the woodland moss. I'm just going to come straight in with that green colour. This is one of my favourite green inks that I have. It's not a real bright um, grass green. It's got a real olivey tone to it, which sits so well and is just I think so subtle it can really lend itself to muted colours but it works so well as a foliage colour and again you can really add that ink just to create also you know the different shading so we can see we've just got that little bit of shade in there I don't know if the camera can pick it up at this stage but I've added more ink at this end of the foliage and at this end so in the centre there it's a lot lighter and that's what starts giving you your shading if you're a little unsure on how to create shading how to create depth with these stencils that's all you need to do so we've got um, some florals coming in now so we can come in with a pink we can see here that the main floral here is a pink colour, so I come in with a pink stencil brush. Now, there's possibly a lot of ink on there already, so I'm not going to pick up any ink. I'm just going to use what is on there for that main colour because I want that pink really to be quite subtle. We have an accent flower here, and I will pick up a lot of ink, and I want that to be really dark, so I'm going to come in really concentrated with that. Now, if I perhaps want to add some shading just to the tips of this flower, what I can do, I can just... I will pick up a little bit more ink and I shall spread most of that onto the stencil first and just flick that into the corners of, or yeah, um, the tips, I should say, the tips of that flower petal. And this is where you've got that control with these smaller stencil brushes and there's even a smaller brush than this. So work with whichever you feel comfortable with. And I'm just working that in just into the tips of those flowers. So the centre of the flower is staying a really pretty pale pink. Now what this is doing is creating 
a relationship between this flower and this flower. Although we've used the same colour, this one is so much stronger. But just by adding a tiny bit of the strong colour into that pink flower, it sort of makes that really coherent. And you can see the shading building up, hopefully. So stencil four, we have another flower. And this, I'm coming in with the purple again, and I'm just going to do that really lightly. So we don't want the intensity of purple as we had on the letter um, on the number itself so i'm just going to do that really pale so just from one ink you can tell this spice plum it's given us a really dark color but it's also given us a really delicate lilac so you can see that just by using one color and lisa has sort of cleverly chosen what she started us off with we can get so many shades okay so stencil number five we have some detail on flower and possibly a little bit of foliage around the outside. I might come in with some green on there. Now, if you're a little bit unsure of what the stencil layers are actually going to give you, because um, if you think about it, let's just bring in the next stencil, that can look quite abstract as it were. Um, great little accents for the backs of cards, by the way. So don't have, don't always think that you have to use this only on the flower. If you just want little accents, like little bursts of fireworks or little stars in the background, use something like this and just stencil lightly through them. But if you're a little bit unsure as to what this layer is going to do, do just check back with the packaging. And although it may not be the colour scheme that you want to use, you can start to use it to identify where the layers are. And it just it might just help you visualise a little bit what colour you want to use um, in that particular area. Now I'm coming in with a small, really smaller brush here because I've got tiny little accents that I want to go into the flower, but I don't want to contaminate the green around the outside. So I'm just going to, this is really fine detail work here. So I try not to get my hand to cover and over what I'm doing. And I can just use this small stencil brush and add that strong pink in the middle of that flower there. And hopefully you can see once I've taken that away that we've got this star in the centre of the flower, but I've managed to get the green around um, the foliage around the outside. These stencil brushes are perfect for that. So number six, we have the centre of the purple flower. So I shall come in, small brush, lots of purple, and that is straightforward. It's such a small detail, but it makes a huge difference on the paper. It really does. So pretty. And also, I don't know if if it's looking a bit confusing or if you've actually used these yourselves, but if you look at this stencil also, normally, if you didn't have the peg system here, you could be forgiven for forgetting which of these um, stencil areas you're wanting to use. This is the advantage of having the peg system. And hopefully now with the US have got the Ultimate 2 that you can start using this and perhaps really sort of appreciating these details yourself um as long as the number stays in the right in the same position on all of your stencils once you've put that stencil on there is no doubt as to which part of the stencil you're using and that just to me it's it just takes away all of the um all of the guesswork and it then just allows you to just enjoy the stenciling and enjoy the image coming together underneath so we have two berries there. So I'm going to do them in really dark pink. And I'm going to attempt to come in with a tiny bit of purple just on the edge of the berries. I don't need a huge amount. And just perhaps flick that in. And it really is a tiny amount of ink that's going through the aperture. But I tell you what, when I pull that away and the detail that we've got on there, it does just differentiates it from that main pink one there. So we've got a little bit of foliage going on here and I just want to give this a different tone. So I've got a blue brush. I'm just going to see how much ink I've got on that blue to start with, on the brush to start with, because um, I don't want to overdo the blue. Now there's very pale. I'll just come in with a little bit more, work off most of the ink on the stencil there and just then before I put that into the apertures, but just by giving myself an undercoat, I suppose, of blue there. I can now come in with a green 
and work that in and hopefully that will give us a slightly different shade of green. Now obviously the other way to do this is to use uh, yellow and blue. That would be a way to do that. But I didn't want to have any yellow tones in this while I'm working so I thought the easiest way to do this was by using blue underneath. Now the other way you can do it also is to add um, a little bit of grey either first or over the top of the grey, um, uh, over the top of the green sorry, and that also gives your main colour, which would be the green, it gives that main colour a slightly different shade as well. So all I'm doing, I'm probably working onto this layer a little bit more than I have done on others, just to work that into a different colour. So if I take that away, you can see that we've got that foliage there, which is different to the initial green. Now it still looks a little blue for me. So I'm going to come in with a lot more green this time. Gusto with a bit more green and that's really toned that down, but it's, that's just changed the green and it's more in line with what I've done there. So come in with stencil number nine. Now, this particular number, the zero, um, has had detail on all nine stencils. But if you look here, there is nothing. So this would be where the number two is, correlates to where number two is. Um, and there is no detail on that stencil number two. So if you were stenciling number two, you, was eight, you would be able to get all of the the detail work done in eight stencils by the looks of it. So don't be alarmed if um, whichever number or even letter if you come to that, that you come to use that there may not be a layer there. Um, it's obviously that it didn't need it at the time. I shall come in with some purple. I think we'll make that really lilac. Um, I didn't pick up any ink, you'll notice. I'm just using what's on the brush. It's going to make that quite lilac. And then just to change that up a little bit, I'm going to come in with my pink brush and just add a little bit of detail over the top. So that does make it quite different, but it's still quite tonal because I've used this pink elsewhere. So there you can see we've got our next number stenciled. So when we put those together, we have a lovely number. Now, I'll, will I die cut this? Yeah, I'll perhaps we'll die cut this because um, I want to show you um, is the dies that we have for this one. Now, this number is actually cut out uh, with two dies. Not all of the numbers are um, configured in this way, but this one in particular is, but I think because we, we need to take out the center there. So now we've got that central position as well. So you do need to take a bit of time just to line this up. And do I have that right? Uh, I think I do. Let's take that away. Now this is the first time that I've done this myself so I thought I'd let's learn together so we've got that lined up there then if I can gently put the outline die over the top without moving that central one the outline die is a, is a lot easier I find to line up I'm going to be using a smaller die cutting machine so I'll just I'll just cut that down to size so I know that it fits through now the advantage actually of these smaller dies is that if you are doing them singly they do fit through your little desktop uh, die cutter oh, there we are i just wanted to show you this i thought it was quite important and there we are we have our number look how gorgeous that is really pleased with that so we have that ready to put on our card and we can lay that in so if I just bring in the original card, what I wanted to show you was the embossing in the background here. What I like to do is have the embossing be continuous from one type of card to another. So I don't know if you can see, but the white panel in the background here is lined up to be um, in line with the embossing on the pink. And I think that's just a really nice feature. But how I wanted to show you, I wanted to show you how I achieved this. Um, I wouldn't suggest running the two layers of card through the embossing folder at the same time because I think that may be just too much for your um, die cutting machine to cope with. So I've used the scalloped and stitched rectangles to cut myself the uh, layer in the background here. 
and I've also used these um, the nesting rectangles here to cut myself um, a frame. So I've attached two of the dies together, run that through, and that not only gives it me the layer in the centre of this colour, but also gives me the frame. So I shall keep that to one side for later. Now, I mentioned that I've used the Blooms and Berries. Now, the Blooms and Berries embossing folder does come with the stencils. Um, I'm not using the stencils today, although this is one of my favourite sets to actually work with. I am going to be using the embossing folder. Now, the embossing folder also comes with a die, but I'm not using that today either. So, I've cut myself my mat and layer for the card, and as I've mentioned a minute ago, it's actually square. Now, this embossing folder is cleverly designed because the majority of this design does actually fit within a the six by six mat here or I think it's just just shy of um, six inches square but apart from just the tips of the leaves going over then I, it fits perfectly on there but it sticks out the end. Now if I were to run this through my um, die cutting machine as is I would end up with an embossed line at this stage, uh, right down this area here, which you could disguise with a piece of card or a ribbon, but ideally I don't want that there. I just want this to be seamless and as I say, make this look like it is actually a six by six folder. So the way to do this is um, take your embossing plates or sorry your die cutting plates now i'm using my big shot on this because what i do need to do is actually put the embossing folder through the machine this way around so obviously you've got a seven inch um width there which won't go through a standard big shot or the the smaller big shot so if this possibly will only work with um the a4 size die cutting machines but what you need to do if i were to put this through conventionally let's say and put this through the embossing folder like that put this through as is i would end up with an emboss line down here so what i need to do let's just bring this on a little bit more can you see the edge there yeah i'm going to bring the my folder and the card right down to the end of the plates and i'm going to just make sure that the edge of the embossing folder overhangs my die cutting plates, making sure that the design stays within the plate, um, stays within the cutting folder, the uh, cutting plate, sorry, but the, the folder hangs off the edge. What that is in effect doing is not putting any pressure on this edge here, so therefore you won't emboss any line along here. So I'm just gonna do that for you now. And if I open this up now, we have the beautiful embossed design, but there's no no mark down the side. So that is perfect for me. That's, that's the, the, the effect that I really wanted. So actually looking at it on there, they actually sit really nicely on there. Um, they do stand out quite nicely. But maybe if we want some more layers on here, perhaps a white a white layer so we can sit the numbers on top of there. And then I can think about stamping and putting the sentiments on as well. Um, this would also work if you was using a circle die um, mat here as well. But I want to have the pattern, this die cut pattern coming onto here as well. So what I need to do is I position my mat where I want that on the front of the card. I bring my embossing folder back in. Now, what I do, I need to reposition the embossed card back onto the embossing folder and that's so easy to do because the emboss is so deep you can sort of feel that lock into position and I felt that there so I know that that is all lined up. I've got the top the white mat there in the position that I want and when I bring that over you'll see that a good major a good portion of the embossing will still be on that white level um, on the white section there. But as I said before, it's probably not a good idea to run the embossing folder through with two layers of card on the inside. But we don't want to um, we don't want to ruin our embossing folder at all, do we? So we'll just line that up. I'm just making sure my 
white card is straight there. That's all lined up as I want it. Turn it over, carefully open up the folder, carefully remove the already embossed layer without touching the white layer that's there. Close the embossing folder again and now you can run this through your machine again. So now we have a lovely mat with just a portion of the embossing folder, which I think, again, is just a really nice background. This is perhaps something that you can just try doing um, on your cards in general. You don't need to use the whole amount uh, or the whole design. Um, just use an abstract area like this. I think it works so well. So now we can start building. So we can put our card on there. And what we can do, we can just position our white layer so it locks into the design that's already been embossed. And we have that seamless embossed design running over two colours. So now we can add some layers. So we can add our frame and I'll possibly 3D this later. And we can add our numbers. We can add 3D foam to that. And I think that's just a really nice detail with the embossed flowers in the background. Stamped and die cut a couple of sentiments. Sentiments. I need to have a little play around with how I want these to look, I think. Um, I might need to mat and layer those. But that is basically how the card is created. So we have that lovely purple one. Um, I've used textured cardstock in the back of this one, but you may have noticed with this one, I've actually used the satin holographic card which works equally as well and looks stunning when it's embossed so I can also add a couple of sentiments to this as well I think they're just so pretty and I think once you actually start stenciling with these numbers and I haven't used the letters yet but um, obviously they will build up in exactly the same way and um, thanks so much for joining me today um, I've loved stenciling this today I was looking forward to this and I shall look forward to seeing you next week. Take care, everyone.